What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy Squiddy, back again with another video. Today, let's talk about how to beat the Math Mech deck. So this is a very annoying mid-range deck that plays a lot of hand traps, and they base their plays off of one card, Math Mech Circular, which allows them to foolish any Math Mech monster to special it from hand, and then when they special another Math Mech monster while it's on the table, you can add one spell or trap Math Mech card from your deck to your hand. So it's pretty broken. It's got a lot of effects bundled into one. Uh, the deck essentially just plays a lot of hand traps. It focuses on using Circular to dump uh, Math Mech Sigma, which allows you to res resurrect itself from the graveyard while you control no extra deck monster zone monsters in the extra deck monster zone. And then they also have a bunch of XYZs that are pretty powerful. Um, they have Math Mech Diameter, which allows you to special summon back any Math Mech from your graveyard when it's normal. And then when it's used as an overlay material on that turn, the XYZ monster gains the Omni Negate effect to negate the act. The, neg negate the effect of any card that your opponent would activate, which is quite annoying. And obviously they have Math Mech Super Factorial, which allows you to special summon back three Math Mechs and overlay instantly for Math Mech Laplacian, which can detach three materials and then send a card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard, send a monster your opponent controls, and then send a spar trap your opponent controls to the graveyard. And because they use Math Mech Diameter, they're going to have the Omni Negate effect on Laplacian as well. And then the other XYZ they use is Alimbertian, which allows them to detach two materials to add any Math Mech card from the deck to the hand. It could also sacrifice itself to special summon a Math Mech from hand or graveyard that's level 4. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. And then they also play some other extenders. They play Math Mech Addition and Math Mech Subtraction, both of which allow you to special summon itself from the hand by targeting a face-up monster on the field and reducing or uh, boosting its attack by a thousand points. They also play one copy of Equation, which is a pseudo monster reborn that's searchable off of either the XYZ Alimbertian or Circular as well. So, the hand traps that are effective against this deck, obviously the first one that comes to mind is Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion. This being able to negate Super Factorial is very, very important. Generally, I would hold this until your turn in order to be able to use it on the Super Factorial. I know some players tend to use it on Math Mech Sigma when it can use the effect in the graveyard to special summon itself, but generally I don't like doing that. Because if the Math Mech player has any other extender, which they play a lot of, they can easily get to the same play and end on more or less the same board, minus a card in hand, I think, with the Super Factorial set. So you essentially burn your Ghost Spell on a Sigma that they didn't need anyways. So it's better, in my opinion, to wait until your turn and they flip the Super Factorial and you can use it. This is a little bit risky because sometimes they end on IP Masquerina and Cyber was Wicked, so they can still go into the Appaloosa to negate the effect of uh, Ghost Spell to play around that. But I still think that it's worth it to hold it and take that gamble because sometimes you can also, depending on what your hand is, if you're leading with certain cards, then they're forced to go into other uh, Link Monsters, maybe like a Unicorn or a Crusader Knight Abermax as opposed to Appaloosa, right? Because they might think that they can resolve the Super Factorial and be put ahead as opposed to making up lose and potentially having it being run over by battle or something like that. So I would always hold Ghost Spell if you can until your turn to use it on the Super Factorial. And Ghost Spell is really, really good because it does have crossover against Branded, like using it against Branded Expulsion. And then it has some crossover against other decks as well. So it's very, very useful in my opinion. If you guys aren't siding tier three, you definitely should be doing so. Next hand trap is Nibiru, the problem being, this is actually very effective against the Math Mech deck because Basically, all of their plays have to go on 5 plus summons, and they don't really have any Omni Negates besides the Laplacian with the diameter tucked under it. But in order for them to tuck the diameter underneath it, like they have to have additional extenders because normally they have to use the body. For example, they're making Alimbertian with the diameter. They're going to still use the Alimbertian after searching to tribute itself to special summon back another Math Mech, for example, or they have to use that to link off into their plays to try and go into Axis Code and kill you. So generally, I think Nibiru is quite live against the stack. Um, I'll show you guys how to uh, deal with that. When to Nib. Let me just... Uh, there we go. Okay. So the best part to Nib is before they make Heat Soul on turn one, in my opinion. So generally, like they have something like this, and then they're just going to go into, um, usually they go into the Splash Mage and then they use the effect to resurrect something. So whenever they have like Splash Mage or they have like three bodies, like two bodies for Link 3 where they're gonna go into Heat Soul, you generally should nib there so they miss the draw, right? Because if you wait to nib until the end of the turn, they're just gonna make Heat Soul and get the free plus one off of the draw effect. So you kind of neg there. So generally when they do this, you should definitely Nibiru. The other point in time to Nibiru is um, when they're going for like the Jammer uh, OTK. So if they're going for the Axis Code, 
with the update janitor to be able to attack twice with 5300, then you should Nibiru, you can wait until they make the access code and then Nibiru, it doesn't really matter. So that's more like the mid game. But on turn one, definitely, you know, you have to have your Nibiru timed correctly before they make the heat soul because if they get the draw, it could mean life or death. If they draw something like an Ash and you're playing Branded, for example, or if they draw like any other card that can allow them to play, right? We don't want them to draw a card if we don't have to. So definitely Nibiru before they're able to do that. A lot of times they have to have other extenders in order to keep playing. If they don't, then they just set the Super Factorial and pass. So they only have the Super Factorial. So you have a lot less to deal with. Um, What else? Okay, another hand trap that we should talk about is the Effect Veiler, Ghost Mourner, and then Infinite Impermanence. These cards are a lot worse against this deck because of the fact that Mass Max Circular kind of, you, it kind of two-for-ones them. If you Veiler the Circular, it doesn't matter. They're going to have Sigma, and then they overlay into Alibertian, so they can still add the Super Factorial. So it's a little worse, but these cards are still very, very good because they're... In the grind game, like your opponent's always going to go for Splash Mage, they're going to go for Trans Code Talker, they're going to make Axis Code and try and game you. So when you have these cards, you can generally hold them for the Axis Talker if you're bold enough, because then it on the resolution, on the closed game state, you use the effect failure, the access code will go back to 2300. And even though it can attack twice, I believe, it's still not enough generally to game you, right? Because of the fact that um, it's only going to have 2300, it's not going to be able to pop any monsters as well. So. Uh, being able to hold that for the access code, which is mainly their uh, mid game, the only the only way they really push for game in the mid game, because of the fact that Circular also has a restriction where you can only attack with one monster for the rest of the turn if you use either of its effects. So generally, they're going to go for access code to game you. So if you have the Veiler and the Mourner, well, you can't really Mourner access codes, you can't re respond, but Infinite Impermanence and Veiler on the um, access code is definitely very good. As opposed to Mourner, you might have to use it a little earlier, maybe something like a Splash Mage or a Trans Code Talker. Trans Code Talker is a little dicey sometimes because if they are able to extra link it right away, it cannot be targeted, right? So you can't even interact with that. So definitely like see what your opponent's doing, see how many extenders they have. Like if they're just going for game with two or three monsters and they're gonna make a Trans Code without any way to co-link it, then definitely wait for that. But otherwise definitely use it on Splash Mage or something that you can afford to use it on. The other thing that I like to do is um, if I have only one copy of Infinite Impermanence and they use Circular Effect, I like to let that go through. And then when they overlay the Circular with the Sigma in order to make Alimbertion and they use the effect, I like to Imperm here because you're Imperming at the latest possible step, which influences your opponent's plays. Maybe like they thought they were gonna be able to add Super Factorial, so they might get a little greedy and add another Math Mech Spiral Trap card with the Circular, so they might add Equation, or they might ma add the other Math Mech, um, I think it's called Induction, the other Trap card, thinking that they're gonna be able to get Super Factorial and that you don't have a Hand Trap, but then you, you, you wait until the last possible moment to use that Hand Trap, so you're stopping them. Potentially, they don't even have access to Super Factorial, so you just win the game more or less on the spot. And that's kind of the same thing with Ash Blossom, I would say, is the fact that um, it's not very good against Circular because obviously it sends the cost, so you can't stop that interaction in the hand. But being able to use that again on Alan Burshin at the last possible moment, I really, really like to do because it allows you to um, take your opponent by surprise a lot of times if they're not playing into hand traps, if not expecting it, right? Because the fact that the Circular went through. The other thing I would love to Ash is side net mining. Anything that allows them to go negative one or at, get access to circular, I would definitely, definitely ash blossom immediately. So side net mining, I would totally 100% ash that. The other thing that you guys should definitely ash is small world because a lot of decks also play that in order to get into the circular. They just need to have circular turn one in order to maximize their plays. Otherwise they're at a huge disadvantage. So any thing that they telegraph they're trying to get to circular as their first play i would definitely ash that even small world even though it's a one for one but we're preventing them from getting circular and if they don't have circular a lot of times we can just win because they're not able to get their setup and get in super factorial really easily right so definitely ash those cards if you can and then Gamma, obviously this one, you just want to Gamma the Circular 100% of the time because you're stopping everything. They get the Sigma back, but that's fine. They're going to have to have other extenders. They're not going to be able to use the Circular effect as well to search for free. So unless they have like another one in the hand that they have in the normal summon or something, but it's like chances are very low. So I definitely Gamma the Circular if you can. And um, otherwise on your turn, you have a lot of things to Gamma as well. You have like the IP Masquerina potentially to Gamma. Don't try to bait it in the battle phase because if you try to like bluff in evenly and you go battle phase, a lot of times they do let it go. And then in the battle phase, they use Super Factorial to summon their guy. And then they use your effect to rip your hand. Then they have the Omni Negate for evenly. Um, you could do this play if you want to like save 
cards on your field. So if you go to battle phase, they might just flip it and then you just send a card from your hand. So you keep whatever monster or spell trap you would commit to your field. So that's one thing you could do. You could bluff the battle phase if you have to, but I don't really, really like doing that against this deck because of the fact that like you kind of need your battle phase to get over a lot of their dinky monsters. Um, otherwise it's kind of harder. And then on their crackback, they also have a lot of plays with circular and um, the cards that they searched off of Cyber's Wicked. So they have a strong follow-up as well. So just be aware of that. Biz Steals are also decent if you happen to side these or play these in any capacity. They're very good against Math Mech Sigma because of the fact that Sigma is a light. So when you use it in response to Sigma, when they have Circular on the table, it's very, very good. You just get that banished. And then unless they have another extender, you don't really have to deal with anything. And then having the body as well is really, really nice to threaten that IP Masquerina on the following turn, as well as threaten the Laplacian, which only has 2000 attack, right? So you can just swing it over by battle. So they're quite nice in a deck that can afford to run them. For D-Shifter, those of you other guys that are playing this uh, D-Shifter powerful hand trap in your side decks, definitely Shifter immediately because of the fact that it stops the Mass Mech Circular. Mass Mech Circular, again, is a cost to send from deck to the graveyard. So if they don't have any way to um, interact with Shifter, then they're not using Mass Mech Circular, so they're probably not gonna be able to play. So I would just shotgun Shifter right away. I don't think a lot of decks, some of the Mass Mech decks do play Gamma, but um, I'd rather just play around Circular than a potential Gamma that they might not, might not even be running. Drone Lockford is also decent against this deck. You obviously want to use it against the first thing that they do. So if they go Math Mech Circular, Special Back Sigma, use Effective Search, then you could draw here. It's very nice because sometimes they don't play around it. Again, like we mentioned earlier, they might not search Super Factorio as their first thing off of Circular. So if you draw them, you punish them hard because they're not able to get into Super Factorio for the rest of the turn. And then they're just stuck with either an Equation or the uh, Induction in their hand, right? So very, very nice card if you are playing that as well. And then last but not least, again, for this deck, I would definitely side in Cosmic Cyclones and Harpy's Feather Dusters, game two and game three, because a lot of them do side certain floodgates. Some of them are siding Anti-Spell Fragrance. Some of them are siding the um, Rivalry of the Warlords as well. So if you don't have any way to interact with this, you're basically losing because of the fact that they're going to have Super Factorial as well, backed by an IP Masquerina potentially, and then they have like um, Cosmic Cyclone. So it's really, it's really, really dicey. Well, I don't think they side Rivalry, I guess, because they're all Cybers, but like they can side other Floodgates. So I know some of them like side, um, was it Golden Match or there can be only, but, but like either way, they side Anti-Spell. I know that for a fact. So definitely having Cosmic Cyclone to deal with the Anti-Spell is very, very important. And obviously they're not going to be able to use the Super Factorial before you can Cosmic because you could either chain to the Super Factorial activation or because you're a turn player, you're able to activate Cosmic Cyclone first. So they're never going to be able to Omni Negate the Cosmic Cyclone before you're able to deal with the Anti-Spell Fragrance. So yeah, that, those are just some quick tips. If you guys have any other ways to beat this deck, which is actually really, really annoying, it takes you by surprise. They play a lot of hand traps. It's a very grindy deck. Um, if you guys have any tips, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.